Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday night. It is the Earthmaster here on this end, May 16th, 2024. It's about 11.10 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 2.8 here into the region of, looks like around the, the um, Costa Rica area, potentially. We'll check that out here in a little bit. Um, covering space weather activity first. I know things have kind of uh, been neutral for the most part here in the last 24 hours or so since our dual flare x flare event here um coming up on three days ago well on the chart here almost three days ago uh still watching this area out on the eastern limb that does have potential for some stronger flaring uh, it is a massive sunspot area let me show you guys this is just a uv filter showing some of the brightness going on there in the, in the uh, magnetic lines but you got to go to the magnetogram image to really see 3685 and uh, the complexity that it harbors back here, quite dynamic uh, as far as a, a bunch of magnetic structure here within that en entire sunspot region. So we'll have to watch that. Even though it's, uh, you know, mellow right now, it could be a major flare player here in the days ahead. Now, 3685. Uh, it does harbor a uh, beta gamma structure. This was put out... Uh, it does look like it was assigned today, uh, but we'll watch that. I mean, there's obviously some uh, X-flare potential. It's a beta gamma delta structures that are uh, capable of producing some of the stronger flares like we had seen there with uh, oh, 3664, the culprit of all the recent auroras here recently. Many X-flares and many uh, CMEs that were shot off at Earth and provided us with a historic aurora event there. Um, about a week or so ago now, right? What? Tomorrow's Friday already. Goodness. Time flies when you're having fun. All right. So looking at the magnetogram image, well, once again, that's about the only sunspot of any concern here that, uh, we need to watch for some flaring. All these other sunspots here, rel relatively stable, disorganized, scattered about, but, uh, 3685 there is one to watch currently still seeing some proton events uh, across the northern area here of the earth the polar region a little bit kicking up there on the south side of the polar region uh, south polar region as well but uh that's been consistent here for a little while it's stirring things up out there with the uh, charged protons uh let's see so no, no major roars in the forecast for now we'll see what happens again as 3685 comes into play real quick did you guys see that huge storm that went through the houston area um they're, they're saying that there was about 110 mile per hour winds straight line winds with a, a large uh, thunderstorm large severe thunderstorm that went through there it was actually tornado warned they believe there may have been a tornado embedded in there but those straight line winds actually do more broad scale damage than save uh, a confined tornado in one area. Uh, you know, 110 miles an hour or 110 mile per hour winds out there across a broad area can create a lot of devastation. Uh, there's almost close to a million customers without power out here, mainly around the Houston area where that uh, tornado worn storm went through quite dynamic uh, I was seeing it on radar earlier and uh, it was a dandy of a storm again it's gonna take these guys a little while to get everything uh, set back up to normal but uh, yeah a lot of people in the dark out there right now all right uh, earthquake activity see what's going on out here got any major movement here uh, let's check so Southern California here a little bit of spotty activity uh, south of the Loma Linda area, a couple earthquakes coming in here in the last hour, mainly confined to this little area. Uh, it does look like it's on a segment of the San Jacinto Fault Zone, which is quite active on any given day, up and down the board here. I don't think we see anything major going on here throughout the uh, state of California in the last 24 hours. Looks like a 2.8 up here in the geysers, but uh, really that's about it in terms of uh, anything above 2.5. Bay Area of California looks pretty quiet. Uh, there's that, uh, the geyser area. These are not actually geysers. There's actually no geyser activity up there. I don't even know why they call it the geysers, but uh, 
Uh, there's a whole bunch of these power stations up here, th uh, geothermal plants, and they utilize the heated areas below here in the Clear Lake volcanic field uh, to create power. And there's also obviously a, a bunch of earthquake activity that comes along with it. And uh, just for fun, let me show you guys, you know, one may think this is a lot of earthquake activity, right? 56 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Check out the last 30 days. How's that? 1,692 earthquakes out here around the Clear Lake volcanic field. Hydrothermal plants out here creating uh, a lot of energy, but also at the same time, a lot of earthquake activity. Uh, Northern California, there's some of that earthquake activity into the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, let's go check out the trimmer map here tonight. Cascadia trimmer. Shows only about eight epicenters here of trimmer. That continues its uh, decline in the amount of trimmer counts here recently. Since about 2022, we've seen a drop off here in terms of regular predictable intervals of large trimmer activity. And since then, it's just been acting a little odd, a little quiet. What that means, well, it's just, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't know if that's a good or bad sign in terms of uh, the potential stress that's already built up out here on the Cascadia subduction zone. Very capable of producing a 9.0 earthquake, by the way. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a handful of smaller quakes up there. Let's go double check here for verification purposes. Doesn't look like a lot. Uh, this is some wind events throughout the day today. This right here looks to be some type of outside interference confined strictly to this Grant Village seismograph station here. I'm not seeing any earthquake activity showing up, any other odd movement that would show up here, obviously across the region if this was legit earthquake activity. Just some, some interference going on there. Uh, Texas oil fields getting hit. Of course, the New Madrid seismic zone seen some activity super early this morning. A 3.8, 1.6, 2.0. Uh, you know, obviously I pointed this out this morning. It's been over 200 years since a large series of events happened out here. We're talking about, I think they've seen at least four seven-pointers. The largest one is 7.5. Now that's just an estimate. Um, there was two 7.5s. And it an earthquake of that magnitude today would be absolutely catastrophic across numerous states out here. It would not just be confined to this minimal area of the New Madrid Seismic Zone because these quakes, when they uh, rock and roll, they're felt all over the place here. The eastern coast and everyone would feel those quakes quite uh, powerful. Uh, so yeah, 200 and something years. I can't remember the exact slip rate accumulation out here on the uh, New Madrid Seismic Zone. I know it's not as much as, say, for example, the San Andreas Fault, um, but who knows? I mean, it's it's uh, definitely a little bit of time has passed, and you know we keep getting reminded here of some of this earthquake activity. 3.8, the largest here in this uh, New Madrid seismic zone. The rest of the uh, world here, well, at least out in the Pacific, still getting some movement out in the Big Island of Hawaii. Haven't really noticed anything different out here yet in terms of any changes there across Kilauea Volcano. Things are still in the yellow and advisory as far as the volcano status goes. And uh, let's go check out a seismograph station or two, see what's going on. There's really not a whole lot showing up here on the USGS map. Uh, there's some of the earthquake activity past 12 hours. Doesn't look like it's any, you know, any elevated uptick. It's just a seems like a consistent amount of earthquake activity, but really no up or down. And far as the uh, de deformation goes here, we've been on the uptick here in the last couple days. It looks like that is continuing here uh, to this hour. Doesn't look like we really went down though. If you follow these trends, there was a little stationary deflationary event on our last graph. That should have happened right about now, right? That would expect to happen maybe right about here, but looks like it wants to go up and up and up still. So obviously that means that things are, um, well, they're quite inflated underneath the area. I'm gonna have to watch that. For now, just some earthquake activity. Uh, far as uh, areas down south here, New Zealand, looks like a three-pointer coming in there. I don't think we've seen anything major going on here, but uh, let's go check out the GeoNet server. It's been a, a minute or two since I've checked this. 
weak and above. We're going to go all magnitudes here. Look at that. Timothy was pointing this out to me earlier. Looks like that uh, right off the plate boundary there in a line fashion. I've definitely been seeing a lot of deep earthquake movement and adjustment going on around North Island with uh, that trail leading down here across the plate boundary. Eventually, there's numerous fault systems out there that are well overdue in terms of earthquake activity. Uh, looks like a 3.8 well north of North Island earlier. Really not seeing anything major going on out here. Let's give a quick glance of the earthquake drums. And, um, you know, aside from a couple of those smaller quakes there, things look quiet, awfully quiet. And that's a good thing, right? Eventually, that's not going to be the case though, across many areas. Pacific area, Western Pacific, a handful of smaller quakes there across Japan, it looks like. Uh, but really, uh, you know, looking at the last 24 hours here, looks like things are, you know, just somewhat moderate to minor uh, activity out here. Really no large earthquake movement, no significant areas affected with any swarming. The area, you know, obviously Taiwan southward into the Philippines region and the area of the Indonesia Islands region. Always seen earthquake activity, two threes and some fours. That's common on any given day. 1.7 coming in right now to the big island. Um, yeah, just it looks like it's a little quiet out here. I mean, there's really nothing big going on. Let's go check out Iceland, see what's going on out here. I know Iceland's another area of high inflated activity going on underneath the surface. And we're going to bring up all of these little super duper, very small earthquakes as well. And still noticing here in the last 12 hours, I want to check out the last six and see if things have changed. Eh, there's been a more, a little bit more down here around the Grindavik area. You know, this is always concerning because uh, the most recent fissure activity, obviously up north here, uh, north of Hagefell, right around the craters area there of Iceland. You know, we did have one though, back in, I think it was January where it came into town. We had a little fissure open up just north of town and uh, damaged some homes out here. That's always concerning because, um, you know, this area, I believe can see a decent magma intrusion here. We've seen that happen back in November. The whole area swelled and then went down. Um, it's it's possible that this could be the next region here of future eruption activity. And we're at the point right now where we should be seeing something here happen soon. I don't like to be a, uh, what's the word, negative negative Nancy? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, just being realistic here, there's been a lot of magma accumulation underneath the area. We're at 16 million cubic meters, according to the Icelandic Met Office here. And if you look at this graph, this is the, oh man, that is a little bit too big. That's even bigger. We're just going to keep it right here. Uh, this is the most recent inflation event. Even with all of this eruption that we've seen here over the last couple months, you know, continuous flow of magma up to the surface and you get these lava fields stacking upon lava fields, we're up there. And we were past pretty much all of the other events where uh, we've seen, you know, an eruptive surface activity take place, except for the one back in the blue here, this darker blue back in um, November 19th to uh, looks like December 17th. So we're inflated. We got a lot of magma accumulation underneath the area. It's just a matter of time before we see where that's going to take place. And the key to watching that, of course, is going to be uh, a lot of earthquake activity. So we'll continue to watch the ice in the area and hope for the best. But uh, there's always that chance there, you know, of seeing that eruptive activity take place south. All right, uh, what else we got? I think that's about it in terms of earthquake activity. I mean, there's, you know, typical movement, nothing that stands out to me. Uh, storm Prediction Center, now I know, you know, they're dealing with some storms overnight. That's kind of shifted further south and east here now. It's just looking at the radar. Uh, but there's still a chance of... Uh, some tornado activity overnight, wind and hail, uh, far as the day on Friday goes. A little bit of movement up in the northern plains, it looks like. Uh, no tornado risk, mainly some wind and hail. And a little threat down there across areas of the south with a 5% chance here of tornado activity. Uh, limited to the region of Louisiana, uh, Alabama, and Georgia region there with a 5% chance. 
Uh, after that, uh, kind of watching day four out here. These guys are hinting at maybe some severe weather. Day four out in Kansas and Nebraska. Uh, after that, really not seeing a whole lot, but uh, we'll have to watch that because when they put out a little severe weather event this far out, uh, and that's going to be issued for uh, Sunday, May 19th. So this weekend, maybe going overnight as well. i got to watch that for uh, some severe potential out there. Alrighty, um, I think that is about it, folks. I'm ready for Friday, ready for this week to end. All the seismograph stations out here look pretty quiet, pretty calm. Um, that's about it. Have a good night, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning, Friday morning. Take care and stay safe out there.